Hello fellow game makers and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how you can animate game objects to music like in Geometry Dash or pretty much any other rhythm game. And if you like my content, maybe consider subscribing and sharing this video. It would really help me to create more content like this. So let's get started. The first thing we will have to do is to create a new audio source. So go to create audio, audio source and then put your audio clip you want to animate to in there so i have just some music right here and we can also create a new sprite for my for me you can also do a 3d object but i like to do a sprite right now so create 2d object sprite and add whatever you want in there so i created this ring right here and have a look at how it looks in the game view we can see it right now so you position so just position your camera so now we should be fine. Maybe move your camera a bit here and there we go. So now we can start coding. So on our sprite we can add a component and call it audio loudness tester. Create a new script and create an ad. Then we will open up Visual Studio. So delete the two using tags at the top and delete the two unity methods. So now we can just go ahead and create a few variables. So first of all, a public audio source, audio source to reference our audio, then a public float update step, and we can default that to zero point one also add a public int and i will call it sample data length this will basically declare how long our array will be and we can set this to some kind of like text resolution so set it to 1024 and also add another private Load and call it current update time. We can set that to 0f. And now we can create the actual data. So the variables where we store our data in. So create another public float clip loudness. And of course also a, this time again, a private float array and call it clip sample data. And so just four variables to go. So we will need a public game object and I will just call it sprite because this will be our sprite. You can also add an array, but I will, will not do that because I will just have one element, but of course you can do the optimize it and create one script and animate many objects with that. And again, another public float. And this will be our size vector. And again, we can default that to one, otherwise our game object won't be actually there if we would default it to zero. So we can again create another public float minimum size and the opposite of that so another public float and call it max size and I will default this one to zero and the other one to 500. So basically we can now start to initialize because we have an array so we can just call the awake function and in there we can say that clip uh, sample data is equal to a new float array and with the length of our sample data length so we got that covered and now in our update method we basically want to iterate 
um, when our current update time is bigger than our update step. So current update time, we can add our time dot delta time onto that. Then if current update time is bigger than or equal to our update step, so basically how smooth the animation will be, then we want to execute some stuff. And basically we will first of all set current update time to zero. And then we can actually get our data. So we can type audio source. We referenced our audio, audio source earlier. So dot clip dot get data. And then in parentheses, we want our to give it a array where we want to store our data in. So clip sample data. And then we want to how many basically the offsets. So I would use source dot time samples. Um, so then we can go ahead and initialize our clip loudness. So we can type clip loudness is then equal to 0f or we can reset it if we did this once. And then we can f type for each for each sample in our clip sample data, the array we initialized here, we want to do some stuff which will be clip loudness plus equals the absolute value. So type math.abs and then in parentheses the sample the variable we said right here and then we can go ahead and set or divide our clip loudness by the sample data length because we add all the samples right here and add it onto it and it would be it would be way too high because we do it for each sample and then we get the average so basically go ahead and now we can modify our clip loudness a bit so it fits our sprite best, better. So we can add our clip loudness times our size factor. We can also clamp our values. So type clip loudness is equal to math f dot clamp. Not a zero run clamp, but a clamp. And then we want to clamp it between or not between, but want to access our clip loudness and then clamp between our min size and our max size. So now we can just apply the scale to all our sprites in a sprite array, or in my case, I just have one sprite. So I will just call sprite dot transform dot local scale and set it equal to a new vector free, and then on all axes we can give it our clip loudness. We wouldn't have to do it for our depth, but just for completeness, I will do it. And basically this will now work. If we would now go back into Unity, we have our all of our things right here and we can reference our audio source and our sprite. And if we would now hit play, we would be able to see our sprite moving. But as you maybe see, it's first of all not really big, so we can add a bit of our size right here. And also it's pretty jittery. That's because of our update, update step. So we can just add another zero in here and it will be much more fluent. Of course, you can also clamp and experiment with maximum sizes. So I hope this tutorial was kind of helpful and play around with it, with it. And if you want to, you can send me your results on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. And till then, see you next time.